Um, you, you know, it, I think shock takes you a long way in a, in a moment of trauma, and I suppose that's what its biological function is. I don't actually know. But it also works at a social level, too. And uh, the shock of those early days, um, you know, managed, I think, to um, uh, make it possible for me and, uh, and, and many, many other reporters to, to get their work done, to find out what happened. Uh, I had uh, friends from high school and uh, people I knew professionally, and I had written a book already about the World Trade Center in uh, 1993. And so I knew quite a few people in there who did not get out. And, uh, you know, it, it was, um, it was a, it was a wrenching experience to realize, uh, you know, all these things that were going on were going to lead to a tremendous number of deaths as well as the successful evacuation of a lot of people. I spoke with one man on the morning who, and a woman on the morning who were working in the same office who were trapped, unfortunately, in, in the building while we were conversing. And uh, their story also uh, is related in the book. So, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a, um, it was a lot to absorb emotionally and, and just analytically as well. I must say that while I was writing the book, and while the people in the telling of the stories were still alive, I was in there with them and rooting for them. And then when I got to the chapters where uh, the first the South Tower and then ultimately the North Tower collapsed, uh, it was a tremendous blow because, um, you know, I'm not a fiction writer, but you have some empathy for the people you try to have empathy and understanding of the experience they're in and, 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 and place yourself there so you can place the reader there. And doing that, uh, you know, you're rooting for these folks. You know, you find out that there's a, you know, there's a 22-year-old guy there named Robert Martinez who, who's a big, goofy kid who, who was a security guard. And he was late for work that day because... It was a Tuesday, and Monday night, the New York Giants had been on the uh, game of the week, the football game of the week. And he'd stayed up late, and he came in late, and instead of going to his usual post, he got sent up to the 78th floor of the South Tower. And that was one of the places where uh, the, the bottom edge of one of the wings scraped through there, caused a tremendous amount of damage and death immediately. Although some people who were on that floor survived. One of the people who survived was Robert Martinez. But he didn't leave his security post. He stayed there. And as we assembled all these accounts from people and as, as we assembled radio transmissions that we got, one, we found, uh, we came across Robert Martinez's and discovered that he was uh, right up until the moment that the building collapsed, describing what was going on, telling what needed to be done, what kind of help, that there were people trapped in an elevator up there, and that the firemen had gotten up there. And uh, we uncovered um, stuff that really had been overlooked even by the city and other investigators. There was, uh, there, there was thought to be no tape recordings of the fire operations, the firefighting operations inside the building, but eventually we were able to discover one that uh, no one had listened to, um, and it was a tape of a man named Oreo Palmer as uh, he was a battalion chief, and he went into the South Tower and made his way up to the 78th floor. Oreo Palmer was a marathon runner. He was a um, tremendous athlete. He won fitness medals in the fire department. And he led this group of firefighters. I think people were you know, behind him. He, as the chief, he wasn't carrying a lot of tools. But he was leading his men up to the area where the damage was, and that was the 78th floor of the South Tower. And you can hear Palmer climbing the stairs. You can hear him giving reports, I'm at 58, I'm at 62, I'm here. And uh, the people coming down are telling me that 78 has got some fire on it. And then he gets up to 78 and he describes what he sees. He said, there's a, a lot of civilians here who are dead. He uses the fire department code for dead civilian. And he says that um, uh, he sees the fire and that he believes it can be knocked down. The fire that he was looking at 
could be knocked down, uh, you know, with a few men with uh, hoses. And uh, he had met a fire marshal who was also on his way up there named Ronnie Buka. And uh, so they arrived up there, and Robert Martinez, the security guard, was waiting for them. And, and he, they merged for a moment there. And, uh, you know, it was the last minute or two minutes of, uh, that the building stood. You know, it collapsed below them, uh, you know, shocking everybody at the point. And there's amazing stories that went on in the North Tower that only by putting together a million little atomic facts were you able to get the full picture. For instance, uh, there were the people in the, in the North Tower, the 92nd floor was kind of the cutoff. Nobody got out of the 92nd floor. And we just started talking to people who had been on the floors below. And on the 90th floor, it developed that when the plane hit, you couldn't open the doors into the exit stairs. Uh, why? Probably because the building shook so much, the doors got knocked out of plumb. In any case, they were jammed, people couldn't get out, and it was getting extremely hot and smoky and difficult to be up there. And um, uh, people began to make their calls home and say, look, I'm not gonna get out of here. And all of a sudden, uh, something comes crashing through the frame of the door, and it's two guys who are out in the hallway named uh, Pablo Ortiz and Frank Martini, And Pablo and Frank worked on the 89th floor, one down. And they were employees of the Port Authority. It wasn't their job to go around and rescue people. They were, you know, not, they were not in the rescue business. But they heard people trying to pound their way out of that door. And so they went up with some kind of tool and got it open. Well, and then it, one of them walked in and told everybody to get out. And uh, they all came down from that floor. There was an, an 80 year old man who was on that floor who escaped, came down 90 floors. He was one of the first tenants ever to move into the trade center. He was one of the last people to get out of it. And uh, we then started talking to people on other floors, 91, 86, down into the 80s. And we found that this, they were having the same experience. Now, realize there's nobody in charge in there, right? Mm -hmm. And people, each floor is its own world. There's no uh, conversation between 89 and 88. They're only separated by 10 feet and, you know, on a floor and a ceiling. But there's no back and forth. There's no communication. So nobody's putting their stories together. But as we talked to them, we said, oh yeah, the two guys came up and they told us to come this way to follow them. And one of the men was wearing an earring. And then, oh, that's Pablo Ortiz. And so we went through and established their locations and found they had saved scores of people between the 78th floor and the 91st floor that morning. And uh, unfortunately themselves did not get out.